What's going on guys? It's your girl Angie Snatch coming at you with another episode of An Unbiased Truth, Decoding the Brother Polite Trial. And today will be part two of the defense, I'm sorry, of the prosecution's discovery exhibits. Now in part one, we talked about their witness list. Part two, we will get into the evidence that they had. Before we get started, I want to say welcome to all my new subscribers and welcome back to the Snatch Gang. And guess what? Today is my birthday. Yes, it is my birthday. Nevertheless, let's go. So we're going to start right off with the prosecution's attachments. What you see in front of you is a certificate of service. It is the final page. Um, this is where the state's attorney is uh, certifying that they served the defense. That's Adam Rossen, and they served him by email on October 11th. Now, at the bottom of your screen, you see copies of the following are attached. This is the state's evidence that they have in their possession. These documents are not in the court records yet, because if you're familiar with the discovery process, it is an exchange of information from both sides and they pick and choose what they want to use. So sometimes you see cases and they say the prosecution had this and this, but they didn't call this witness and they called that witness. They, they both get to pick and choose what they want to enter into court. And it's not until those things are entered as exhibits that they are then, if ever, made available to the public. But we can get a great gauge from this list what their evidence is. Starting off with the police report. We've all seen the police report, so that's pretty standard. We don't have to go back over that. Under police report, you see A form. Now, I'm not sure which A form this is because the A criminal form usually is followed by a numerical code. Because they did not put a numerical code behind it, I can't with certainty say uh, what the, what a form that is. Then you have the sworn statements that is from all of the witnesses, including T.S. the minor, Linda Orocho, and the people that we cover in that witness list yesterday. Lab reports and reports with an S, remember that. Rap sheet, expert reports, crime scene report, victim statement, photographs available for copy and or inspection. Now, why it says copy and or inspection? Because this is a minor, they will be able to make copies of certain documents, but other documents, they will have to make an appointment or some type of arrangement with the state's attorney's office to uh, inspect those documents. They will not be able to make a copy and keep in their possession. Let's move on to page two. So in page two, they give a full list of their evidence. You'll see that body-worn camera is not X'd off, but it is listed under other. So it is there. In the right side corner of your screen, you see 911 CAD available. That is that 911 call that uh, we talked about. So they have a form listed again local priors. I did not see any priors uh, for Brother Polite, but that doesn't mean that there isn't an arrest record. You know, sometimes people are arrested. You could be arrested for a broken taillight and then they let you go. That is still an arrest record, though there isn't a court record. So just because I don't see it doesn't mean that they don't have it. Uh, NCIC at slash FCIC. NCIC is the National Crime Information Center based out of Washington, D.C., and FCIC is the Florida Crime Information Center. So basically, it's just a database. So what they're saying is that we have a copy of that database report there. Now, this one is very interesting because consent to assume online presence. So that means if you've been communicating with Brother Polite via Instagram, email, or anything dealing with his online presence through his website, he has given consent for officers or um, the judicial system, well, no, police officers. Usually it's the FBI. I've only found like two other cases that they uh, use this, and one was United States versus Jones. And there's an article with uh, a woman that I admire. <clears throat> She's kind of like 
back and forth on whether that is a good thing that uh, the FBI and that law enforcement can use this. But in this case, it is shocking to me because there's a lot of people, I'm sure, that were communicating with him via social media that should be shaking in their boots because you may not have even been talking to him, to be honest. So this is the article. Now look at the consent to assume online presence search. As I understand it, agents or officers obtain the consent to assume the person's online identity, which they do at some later time. That not being convenient at the moment consent is given, as we see in these two cases, that United States versus Jones, and it was another case that she's discussing. The place to be searched is, I gather, cyberspace. Since the consent to assume online presence lets officers use the person's online accounts to search cyberspace for other evidence, i.e. to find others involved in child pornography in the two cases described above. So the place to be searched is apparently unbounded. And I'm wondering if the temporal dimension of the consent is pretty much the same. I don't see any mention of the consent to assume online presence's form limiting the length of time in which, in which the consenting person's online accounts can be used for this purpose. I suppose there's a functional self-limitation in what that consent aspires. Oh, and in that the consent expires when the accounts do meaning when the account is deleted or if the uh account is suspended that she's assuming that only then is the limit of consent to assume online presence there yeah so <laughs> let me know what you think about that in the uh comment section let me go on Consent to search hotel room. I'm actually going to do a live so we can have some back and forth about this after I read it all out. Consent to search hotel room. Consent to search phone. On February 27th, they searched his phone. Consent to search phone again on March 24th. DNA report dated now, I don't know what that date is. It's the 4th of 2021, so that's a clerical error on their part. ER provider notes, Mondrian South Beach hotel receipt, photograph, property receipt, items from the hotel, property receipts, victim's clothing, property receipt, rape kit, rape kit analysis request form, Property receipts, blood and urine. Property receipts, defendant standard two. DNA collection, crime scene squad form. DNA collection, crime scene squad form with description of DNA samples. So not just the date that he reported. Remember, there was a warrant issue. He was served for him to come give his DNA. But this is a different DNA sample because this is DNA collected by the crime scene squad. I want to pull this up for you. This is the uh, manual, the pocket guide for police response to sexual assault. But I, what I wanted to read in particular was the types of crime scene evidence. On the right side of your screen, I'm going to start on that last uh, sentence. The following is a list of possible sources of evidence in sexual assault investigations, but are not limited to saliva, ropes, twine, cordage, body tissues and or body parts, bedding, witnesses, saw, heard assault, saw, heard anything, led to other witnesses, descriptive photos and sketches, forensic evidence, hairs, fibers, soil, etc. Victim slash suspects, body fluid slash tissue, semen, blood, vaginal fluids, tampons or sanitary napkins, latent fingerprints, items used in the assault, could be condoms, lubricants, burglary tools, etc. Other items related to assault, clothing, bedding, facial and toilet tissues, items left by suspect slash victim etc. So that's a list of some of the potential things that they would have been searching for and collecting 
at the crime scene. But this is a DNA collection at the crime scene with a description of the DNA sample. So each each item that they took it from each place is a full description of those DNA samples. So they have more than one DNA sample. Recorded statement preambles, and those are those sworn statements again, but then they have the recording. Then you have RTC report visit one and RTC report second visit. So first visit, second visit. RTC stands for Rape Treatment Center. So they have a report from that initial visit and then clearly from this, there was a secondary visit to Roxy Bolton. Then you have the toxicology report, the CAD report, that's that 911 call and it fully typed out, the dispatch audio, that's all of the communication between each of the officers back and forth, even um, to the police headquarters from dispatch to 911 everything body worn cameras with court order limiting the disclosure because we're talking about a minor there is a court order in place where um, they're limiting the amount of video that they will be showing um, DNA report dates June 23rd and crime scene narrative continuation and this is just the start. This is the prosecution coming with, this is not a he said, she said case. That's why I said, unless that's a hill you want to die on, I would back off from that because it is very clear that they are using forensics and that I'm, we're not just talking about forensics as far as DNA samples. We're talking about forensics as far as a telephone search, the hotel room search assuming online presence, assuming his online presence. There's a lot of shady stuff going around. It made me look at that webmaster with a side eye a little bit now that I know that that consent to assume an online presence uh, was actually done, that that search and seizure was done. Uh, this case is definitely going to trial um, on December 3rd is the status hearing and if it doesn't go to trial the only other thing I see is a plea deal and that consent to assume online presence that's got the smell of plea deal all over it for me because they can use that to get evidence but you can also use that as leverage when you're ready to plea out hmm well you guys let me know what you think. I am going to do a live. Tell me in the chat when is a good time for me to do a live. Let's do a live and talk about it. Go back and forth. Let me answer your questions. It's your girl Angie Snatch.